All right, let's start the presentation. I am Seungun Han and I'm very pleased to share my research. Thank you for inviting me. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the vulnerability of the Trusted Platform Module and subvert Microsoft BitRocker with it. I'm a senior security researcher at the Affiliated Institute of ETRI, and I'm a review board member of Black Asia and Gipsicon Conference. I was a speaker at several conferences like uh, Usenix Security, Black Asia, Black and Europe, Hack in the Box Security Conference, and so on. Additionally, I'm a Debian Linux maintainer and have been taking care of packages related to the CPU and advanced configuration and power interface. I have contributed several Linux kernel patches too. These are my previous works. I presented three vulnerabilities about the TPM. CVE 2017 16837, CVE 2018 and CVE 2020 If you want to know detailed information about the TPM and the vulnerabilities, please check my previous works. The goal of this presentation. I present an attack vector at three sleeping state to support a trusted platform module. The S3 sleeping state is cost of the power of CPU and peripheral devices. I found CVE 2018-662 from a discrete TPM and CVE 2020 from uh, 05 to 6 from a uh, formal TPM. I also introduced a new tool Bitricker. Bitricker extracts the volume master key of Bitracker from TPMs. Bitricker can mount a Bitracker locked partition uh, with the VMK. Disclaimer. Firstly, I do not explain BitRocker's encryption algorithm. I focus on the protection mechanism for the volume master key, especially uh, the mechanism only with a TPM and its uh, default option of BitRocker. Secondly, I do not explain vulnerabilities in BitRocker. I introduce the TPM vulnerabilities and support the VMK protection of BitRocker with them. The vulnerabilities I found are in the TPM, not the BitRocker. All right, hmm. first of all, uh, I would like to tell you a short story because I don't want to make a serious mood. All right, hmm. once upon a time, there was a young boy and his father made a wise remark to him. Life is wild. My son. Hmm. When he listened to it, he imagined the scene and thought. He was a small lion and would be a king like this. Hmm. Yeah, it was a happy dream. However, as he grew up, he thought he was not a king like a lion and would be a uh, would become that guy and could do something important with the king. But uh, life was wild like the father's word and he finally realized that he was just a small animal over there. Hmm. And it was almost impossible to become an important person like the left side. However, he was not disappointed because he became a street researcher and the nuts were enough for him. As you know, the happiness doesn't last forever. And the day had come, he met a big, big problem. This guy was his hero and he wanted to be like the guy. As you know, the guy is the father of Linux operating system and he looked like he loved both uh, Linux and Windows. So the poor skilled researcher tried to make the best researching machine with Windows 10 Plus, Bitrocker Plus, Linux. And then this screen showed. As you know, this screen shows that Bitrocker kidnapped your the uh oh, sorry, um I mean Bitrocker protected your data. Mm -hmm. Maybe from you, right? Mm. Anyway, it means that 
uh, if you want to get your data back, uh, you have to type the recovery key, even though the data are yours. Mm. Unfortunately, the poor security researcher uh, forgot the key and he just screamed. Even though uh, he was in adversity, uh, he didn't give up. He made up his mind to get the data back and started his long and painful journey. As you guess, the poor script researcher is me, and uh, this is my story. This is content and background. This is poor script researcher's uh, system. Uh, the system was Intel Look 8 i7 HVK and had a secure boot and TPM 2.0 feature and Windows 10 and Ubuntu 18.4 uh, were installed in each disk. From now, I will talk about BitRocker. According to the Microsoft documents, BitRocker is a data protection feature that integrates uh, with the Windows operating system. Oh yeah, data protection feature that protects data from me, maybe. Hmm. Anyway, it addresses the threats of data theft or exposure uh, from lost, stolen, or inappropriately uh, decommissioned computers. It provides uh, the most protection uh, when used with a uh, trusted platform module. For that, uh, the firmware must uh, support uh, TCG-specified uh, static root of trust for measurement. The important point of the, uh, the BitRocker are trusted platform module and static root of trust for measurement. TPM is a tamper-resistant device and has two versions, uh, TPM 2.0 and TPM 1.2. TPM is used to determine the trustworthiness of a system by uh, investigating the values stored in the PCRs. TPM is also used to limit access to secret data based on specific PCR values. For this, TPM has two operations, seal and unseal, to manage secret data. Zero operation increases the secret data with PCRs of the TPM. On zero operation can decrease the sealed data only if the PCR values matches the specific values. BitRocker of Microsoft uses the seal and unseal functions for VNK protection. The root of trust for measurement sends integrity relevant information to the TPM. TPM specification calls this accumulating operation extend. As you see the extend process on the middle of the page, uh, the TPM accumulates the measurements to a PCR with the previously stored value in the PCR. Because of this process, a small bit chain, uh, that changes uh, to a PCR value will affect all the following extended values. RTM is the CPU controlled by core RTM and it is the first set of instruction when a new chain of trust is established. Static RTM is started by static CRTM when the host platform, platform starts at power on or restart. The important point of SRTM is that it extends measurement or hashes of components to PCRs before passing control to them. When the host platform starts at power on or restart, SCRTM measures itself and virus will perform a code. Mm. After that, SCRTM extends hashes to PCRs before transferring the control to BIOS firmware. Finally, SCRTM transfers the control. BIOS firmware, bootloader, and kernel also measure and extend the next code and transfer the control to them. This process is called measured boot. These are examples of uh, PCR values. Static, related, static RTM related uh, PCRs are from PCR number 0 to 15. All right, let's summarize the things we have to do. As I mentioned before, the TPM protects uh, VMK. So firstly, we have to recover PCRs of a TPM to unseal the VMK. Secondly, we have to get the encrypted VMK from BitRocker. Thirdly, we have to decrypt the encrypted VMK for, with the TPM. And finally, we have to unlock uh, BitRocker locked partition with the VMK. Mm. 
subverting TPMs with one vulnerability. Many security researchers have tried to get the VMK with physical bus attacks like these. Wow, they are amazing, right? Mm. But I could not use this way because uh, firstly, my soldering skill is not uh, as good as these researchers, you know. Secondly, uh, the PC was not uh, was my company's uh, property, so it means the PC was not mine. And if I failed to, to fix it, uh, I would have another big problem. Anyway, the physical bus attack was rational and practical. TPM is a temporal resistant device, so it is hard to get data from inside of a TPM. However, the bus called low pin count is not secure and temporal resistant. Researchers uh, believe uh, PCRs of a TPM were well protected. According to the TPM specifications, SRT PCRs only can be reset by host reset, that means uh, power on or restart. We usually trust the specification, but the implementation is... Um, unfortunately, software development is not easy these days because there are so many people who support the developer like this. Project manager, security manager, manager of manager, even CTO and CEO heartily support the developer. And due to it, the developer has no time to read the specification carefully. Mm. Because of this environment, I could find and publish uh, CVE 2018-662. It could reset the TPM when the system entered the F3 sleeping state of the advanced configuration and power interface, or ACPI. After exploiting the vulnerability, or PCRs and the uh, states were initialized. Due to the vulnerability, I could reset the TPM without physical access. Unlike other researchers, uh, entering a three sleeping state was enough to exploit the vulnerability. Hmm. It meant I did not need to worry about uh, tearing down the PC. Mm -hmm. A recent system supports uh, the ACPI sleeping state. HPI is a specification about configuring hardware components and performing uh, power management. When the system enters the sleeping state, the system cuts off the power of all devices. And the important thing is that TPM is also powered off in the F3 sleeping state or suspend mode. From this page, I just call sleep mode for uh, the F3 sleeping state. This is the sleep mode, uh, the sleep process of the SRTM. The important point of this process is uh, the interaction of the operating system and the HPI module. For the, the HPI sleep process to work correctly, the operating system and the HPI module uh, have to collaborate with each uh, other in a predefined order. What if the operating system is compromised? and does not notify the TPM of sleep. Mm. This is the SRTM vulnerability, and I call it the gray area vulnerability, CVE 2018-662. If you want to know the reason of the name, please check my previous words. This is the impact of CVE 2018-662. As you see, the left one is normal PCRs of the TPM when SRTM is enabled, and the right one is PCRs after exploiting the vulnerability. Hmm. Or SRT and PCRs are cleared. So I tried to exploit the TPM uh, with the vulnerability and my effort hmm, would be gone. Because this is the TPM information and it said Intel TPM. Hmm. As you know, Intel didn't make the hardware TPM, so this means that, yeah, something wrong. Let's go back to the TPM. 
there are two typical types of TPMs. Uh, one is a uh, discrete TPM and the other is formal TPM. Discrete TPM or DTPM is a hardware-based hardware TPM and connected to LPC bus. It is secure, expensive, and widely deployed in high-end products, and it also supports TPM 1.2 and TPM 2.0 specification. Formula TPM or FTPM is a formula-based TPM and resides in a secure processor. It is uh, maybe secure, um, cheap, and also widely deployed from entry products to high-end products. It usually uh, supports uh, only TPM 2.0 specification. To get my data back, uh, I tested CVE 2018-662 and unfortunately, Intel Platform Trust Technology or PTT also had the slim mode vulnerability. So I reported it to Intel in February uh, 2018 and uh, 19 and they assigned Intel Security Advisory and CVE 2020-0526. According to my test result, many manufacturers such, such as uh, Intel, Lenovo, Gigabyte, and Asus uh, were vulnerable uh, at the time. It means TPM-related code of BioSwift firmware seems to be shared for uh, the DTPM and FTPM. All right, I got the real power. I could reset the DTPM and FTPM with one slim mode vulnerability. Hmm, let's exploit it. Kernel module for exploiting the vulnerability uh, patches the TPM PM suspend function in the TPM driver. The function is invoked by kernel during sleep and sends TPM2 shutdown state to the TPM for saving uh, current state. The kernel module changes the function to another function like this. Mm, yeah, it's a very simple code. Support so Microsoft BitRocker. As I mentioned earlier, uh, TPM is the VMK of BitRocker. BitRocker uses two PCR profiles. If the UEA5 security is enabled, it uses PCR number 7 and 11. If UEA5 security is uh, disabled, it uses PCR number 0, uh, 2, 4, and 11. If you want to know the profile, um, you can see it with Manage BD tool like Glow. Mm, this machine uses uh, PCR number 7 and 11. If then, what information is stored in PCR number 7 and 11? This is the PCR usage of UEFI. The TPN specification said secure boot policy information like keys, uh, certificates, uh, used by uh, UEFI is stored in PCR number 7 and operating system defined information is stored in uh, PCR number 11. After analysis of BitRocker, I, could, I concluded that I needed hashes of, a norm, of the normal system for PCR number 7 and 11 because, as you know, I could reset the TPM with my vulnerabilities and it meant I could make PCR number 7 and 11 normal uh, with replaying the normal hashes. But how? Hmm. I could get them from event logs. Event logs consist of PCR number 7, oh sorry, PCR numbers, uh, hashes, and event types, and event data. According to the specification, uh, RTM extends hashes to a TPM and saves event logs for uh, each measurement. However, event logs were gone when the corner started. Hmm. If XT boot services of EFI boot service was called uh, EFI, boot form EFI formula flushed them, it meant I needed a custom bootloader. Hmm. Frankly say, I felt something wrong again at that time, and <sighs> I should have given up and removed Linux, Linux operating system. I regret that now. Anyway, I made a custom bootloader version 1. Custom bootloader version 1 is uh, based on group 2 of core boot. 
because it has a wrapper of EFI TC2 protocol. So I didn't need to make the custom bootloader from scratch. Uh, for, for event logs, uh, I added a new feature uh, that got event logs and saved them into addresses uh, 18,000. The event logs function, uh, the get event logs function returned uh, crypto as I log format like this. And it consists of a single header and multiple log data. So I had to parse each entry from the start and to the end. And finally, I got the event logs. This is the boot sequence of custom boot router and corner. When BIOS UEFI format starts, it loads SIM boot router because of secure boot. And SIM boot router is signed by Microsoft and Linux operating system can boot with it. SIM boot router loads uh, my custom boot router version 1 and it executes get event logs function and extracts event logs like this. Mm. On the left side, PCL numbers are shown and on the right side, hashes are shown. And then custom boot router executes rinse scanner and it loads the kernel module and user level applications. The kernel module loads event logs and dumps them into a kernel log file. Lastly, replay tool loads event logs from a kernel log file and replay them to the TPM. Even though I got the hashes, I couldn't get my data back yet. Let's see the boot sequence again for the reason. In case of normal Windows boot, when UEFI formula starts, it extends keys, certificates, and a secure boot flag to the TPM. They are static value and always the same. It executes Windows Boot Manager, boot mg.fw.efi, and the formula verifies its signature with the Microsoft Windows Production PCA certificate and extends it to the TPM. This is the final value of PCL number 7. When the boot manager starts, uh, it tries to unseal the sealed VMK of BitRocker with the TPM and gets the VMK from the TPM. Finally, the boot manager can decrypt uh, a uh, BitRocker locked partition and Windows operating system starts successfully. In contrast, other uh, bootloaders like uh, Linux bootloader and malicious bootloader start, the former extends a Microsoft Corporation UEFI CA certificate to the TPM because Microsoft signs other bootloaders only with the private key of the UEFI CAs. Because of it, the final value of PCL number 7 is different from the previous case. And so the boot manager start when the boot manager starts, it tries to unseal the sealed VMK of BitRocker with the TPM and fails like this. Fortunately, uh, getting a hash of Microsoft Windows production PCA is easy because Secure Boot is, uh, has been widely uh, deployed and I could get it from other PCs. Additionally, Microsoft Windows also saves uh, our measurement logs. So I could get it from Microsoft TPM PCP toolkit. This is the result of the PCP toolkit and this is the hash of Windows production PCA certificate. Hmm. How do I find it? Hmm. Because this is the event log data and this is the text part. You can see it, uh, the text uh, Microsoft production PCA. Hmm. Additionally, the expired date is 2026, so I can use this hash for more than six years. Hmm. However, I'm not sure because the boot or was found this year. Hmm. All right, the last step is unsealing the VMK. According to my research, unsealing the VMK is uh, not performed in a single TPM command. These TPM commands and parameters are needed. 
As I analyzed the BitLocker, I found out that all parameters of TPN commands were static. Hmm. As you know, all parameters start, uh, started from the base, base index and Windows Boot Manager was the first application after UFI firmware. So if I got the parameters, uh, I could reuse them forever. The important thing is that how to get the parameters of each command. Reverse engineering was uh, good for that. However, I have no time, as you know. So I made another custom bootloader version too. This time, I added hooks to the TPM protocol of uh, UEFI firmware, and the bootloader executes Windows Boot Manager with uh, the chain loader feature. Then the hooks of the TPM protocol dumps uh, all commands and parameters. This is the boot and dump sequence. When the UEFI firmware starts, uh, it makes an EFI TC protocol service structure like this. The custom bootloader makes a hooked EFI TC protocol service structure. And then the custom bootloader executes window boot manager and the hook dumps all data and parameters like this. Hmm. This is a real dump data of TPM2 ROS command. This field shows TPM2 ROS command value, and this field shows a used handle for selling VMK. These two fields are important. And they are public and private data of sealed VMK object. The output buffer is below uh, is the response of the TPM command. This field shows a success code. And this field shows the loaded handle of sealed VMK. The handle is important for uh, TPN2 on seal uh, command. This data shows TPN2 start the auth session. It is uh, very simple to the previous command. This is TPN2 start the auth session command and TPN key and bind handles for uh, protecting a new session. Null handle means uh, just creating a new session handle with the nonce. This is a hash of the nonce, and the response has a, a success code and a new session handle. The session handle is important and used for TPM2 on C command. This shows TPM2 policy authorize and the TPM2 policy PCR command. TPM2 policy authorize is very simple. Uh, it allows a new policy to the session, so the parameters are uh, a uh, TPM command and the session handle that are created on the previous page. The result has a success code. TPM2 uh, policy PCR means creating a policy that includes specific PCR values. So the parameters are TPM2 policy PCR and the session handle and policy digest and the map and the Result shows an error code. The code is the TPM return code value. TPM return code value means the value is not correct. And the reason is that PCR number 7 and 11 are not matched with the PCR, uh, PCRs used for sealing VMK. For us, this is not a big problem because we already have the power that resets and makes the TPM normal. So the final result is, looks like this. This shows TPM to unseal command, and these two are uh, the loaded handle of sealed VMK and session handle, and the result is success, and uh, this is the VMK. Whew, it was a long journey, right? Yeah, and if this was the last page of my journey, I couldn't be here as a speaker. I tried to find where the public and private data of sealed VMK were, and I also tried to find uh, where the PCR policy and BMA were. This is very, very important because if I 
if I find this information, uh, I can extract the VMK from other PCs. And the location is the BitRocker metadata. BitRocker saved a uh, parameter uh, into the TPM encoded VMK blob of the metadata area. And I could get the metadata with the well-known tool DisLocker. And due to it, uh, I could also get a speaker ticket. Mm -hmm. This is the TPM encoded blob of BitRocker's metadata. This part has public and private data of sealed VMK for TPM to load command. And this part has policy digest and uh, PCR BMF for TPM to policy PCR command. Except for uh, these, these data, uh, other parameters uh, are static, as you know, so I can extract uh, the VMK from other PCs. Finally, I got the last piece of the puzzle. I reset uh, DTPM and FTPM and got the more hashes from UEFI formula and replayed them to the TPM. I also got a TPM encoded VMK blob and sent it to the exploited TPM. Lastly, uh, I extracted the VMK from the exploited uh, TPM and got my data back. BitRecord design and implementation. BitRecord is a new tool to get your data back. It can decrypt the BitRecord lock partition uh, with the sealing mode vulnerability. It consists of several parts uh, I made and customized, such as uh, BitRecord bootloader, BitRecord kernel module, BitRecord launcher, and customized customize this locker. This is BitRecord's uh, GitHub URL. Uh, so uh, if you want to get the source code, uh, you can get the source code from here. You can also make BitRecord boot, boot over USB like me. Firstly, I installed Ubuntu 18.4 to the USB drive. And then I built and installed my uh, BitRecord bootloader Custom, um, customized uh, kernel module and launcher to a USB drive. Finally, I built and installed customized TPM2 tool and customized this locker. This page shows the test results. I reported the DTPM vulnerability in uh, early 2018 and FTPM vulnerability in early uh, 2008, uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, many products uh, seem to be patched this vulnerability. Uh, I really appreciate uh, global companies' responses. Thank you. However, some products are still vulnerable, and many products that warranty periods uh, has been expired are also vulnerable. If you use old products, uh, I recommend you uh, following the countermeasure of my presentation. All right, demo time. Because of the time, uh, I prepared a short demo of BitRecord. The system is booting with Windows 10. The target system is Intel Look 8 i7 HBK. UEFI secure boot is enabled. So malicious bootloader cannot be loaded in this system. BitRocker is also enabled. BitRocker uses uh, PCL number 7 and 11 to protect the VMK. The secret is in the BitRocker lock partition. It cannot be leaked without subverting BitRocker's protection mechanism, as you know. Right. Let's extract the secret with BitRecker.
plug the V-trigger USB drive in the machine. The shim bootloader and V-trigger bootloader are loaded. Shim bootloader is loaded first to pass the uh, verification of UEFI secure boot. V-trigger uh, bootloader dumps all event logs like this. PCR numbers and hashes are, are used to make the TPM state normal. Bitreaker extracts event logs with the kernel, log, kernel module. The Bitreaker kernel module saves uh, them to a kernel log file. The Bitreaker can detect a bitrock lock partition automatically. Let's make the system sleep to exploit the TPM vulnerability. Bitreaker kernel module exploits the TPM vulnerability. After exploiting, uh, the TPM is initialized. Bitreaker replays hashes to the TPM. Replaying hashes makes the TPM state normal. Bitreaker sends TPM commands to unseal the VMK. VMK is the key that decrypts the bitrock lock partition. As you see, the, uh, we got the VMK and decrypted the partition successfully. The partition is mounted to Windows directory. All right, let's explore the Windows 10 partition with the file manager. The decrypted partition is shown in it. And finally, we got the secret file. This is conclusion and black soundbite. I found the sleep mode vulnerabilities CVE 2018-6-2 and CVE 2020-5-6 that can subvert the DTPM and FTPM using the F3 sleeping state. Bitrigger can decrypt a uh, bitrocker of the partition. It extracts the VMK from TPMs and mounts the encrypted partition. Lastly, please, please update your virus UFO formatter or use Bitrocker with the pin. Additionally, I published the TPM vulnerabilities checking tool Napper last year. Uh, please check your system with the latest version of Napper. Napper is in GitHub. This is the last page. Uh, as you know, once upon a time, there was a security researcher over there, and he overcame adversity and went back to his peaceful life. Nothing has changed except he become a speaker and a living world member of uh, Black Asia. And these are my uh, press link and email address. Uh, I always welcome your contributions. So if you have any idea, please let me know. Thank you for listening and your precious time.